All right, now look, today I'm finna show y'all how to make the most succulent, the most divide, the most scrumptious roasted turkey you've ever had. So go on ahead and get yourself a pen and paper because I'm telling you right now, don't ask me for the damn ingredient list. Now, one of the things that I like to do, I like to dry brine my turkey when I'm gonna be roasting it. I only use a wet brine when I'm smoking. A dry brine is simply just coating the bird in kosher salt the day before you plan to make it because that's going to extract a lot of the liquid from the bird and then it's gonna be reabsorbed, which is gonna leave you with a more more succulent and delicious turkey. So don't skip that step. The next day is now here. So in the bottom of my roaster, I'm adding in some carrots, some celery, a couple of shallots. I have one navel orange here that I've also sliced. Just so you know, we're going to be roasting some garlic for our compound butter. So go on ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. I've also added in two leeks that I've just kind of just sliced in half. And then I'm also going to be adding in about 16 ounces of some organic chicken bone broth. Now, just because I'm only making this video uh, for the purpose to show y'all how to make a turkey. I'm not adding in more liquid. Um, but for the holidays, I usually add maybe two or three of those because that's how I like to make my gravy. I'm going to be adding in the turkey neck and the giblets to the bottom of this because, again, that's going to add a lot of flavor. And that also goes to show that I've cleaned my turkey. Don't be damn nasty and be cooking your turkey with that damn bag inside the turkey. I've seen too many people do it, and that's trifling. Add the roaster to it. And now that's done at the bottom. Now the next day has come. You're probably going to have a lot of liquid on the turkey. So I just like to go on ahead and kind of pat that down dry. You don't want a bunch of excess liquid kind of all over the place. And like I said, for my compound butter, I like to roast my garlic. I just think that kind of boosts up the flavor a little bit. So I have my oven preheated at 400 degrees. Now, the only reason why I'm using three bulbs of garlic here is because these were very, very tiny. Um, So if you have a large one, you can use one or two. It really just depends on you. For me, this was the perfect balance. It wasn't too garlicky at all. I like to add in a little pinch of kosher salt and a little bit of crushed black peppercorn as well. I'm going to wrap that up nice and tight, place it in the oven at 400 degrees for about an hour or until the garlic itself is that like beautiful caramel color. I don't like it to get too dark, but you definitely want it to definitely roast. Now, as far as the herbs that I'm going to be using, I like to use cilantro in mine. You can absolutely use parsley if you would like. Um, I'm not one of those people that has that weird thing with cilantro when they say it tastes like salt. So for me, I like to use it, but parsley also works. I've done both. Um, now for both the rosemary and the thyme, I like to remove it from the stems. I find that the stems make it a little bit too bitter. So I just take the time to kind of remove that and then I'm going to chop all of that down. Um, I'm also going to do the same with the sage. I'm using about six sage leaves and that's all of the herbs that's going to be going in the butter. Now I have two blocks of unsalted butter here that I'm going to be using and I'm also going to be adding in about a half a table spoon of basil paste. And then I'm going to be adding in the zest of one lemon. Do not throw that lemon away because you're going to be using that later on. Our delicious roasted garlic is now done. So I'm going to carefully squeeze that in. It is extremely hot, but as you can see, it kind of just melts out. And again, that just adds a lot of flavor to it. You're going to give this a good mix and then you're going to end up with this delicious, delicious compound butter. Okay. It is... This stuff is just, it's, it's absolutely stellar. Now that that's all done, we can go on ahead and start to get the bird all dressed up. Now, when you're placing the butter underneath of the skin, just make sure that you're being careful so that you don't rip it. Of course, the turkey is still going to turn out delicious if it rips. It's just for aesthetic purposes because as the turkey starts to cook, if it has any tears in it, that skin is going to get a lot tighter. So the tear is just going to get bigger and bigger. So you just want to be careful of that. And as you can see, I'm making sure that I'm pressing the butter down, working it towards the back so that I can make sure that the breast of the turkey is fully coated in that compound butter. Now I'm going to make sure that the exterior and the inside of the bird also has the butter. Do not feel like you have to use all of your butter because you're going to be using that, the leftover butter later on down the line, because we're going to be using the Julia Child's method by covering up our bird with cheesecloth. I'll talk to you guys about that more later on down the line. Make sure, see that butter right there, that's left over. Set that to the side because we're going to use that. Um, I'm Now I'm going to put in a half of a lemon. I'm going to put in a half of a sweet Vidalia onion, a few stalks of celery, as well as some carrots. You can put in as much or as little as you would like. I'm not one of those people that likes to stuff my bird with stuffing. Never have, never will. It's just not for me. And if I'm going to stuff a bird, I'm going to do it after the turkey is cooked. I'm going to tie up the legs because I do not have time for my turkey to be doing the spread eagle. Now for seasoning, I'm going to go and 
with the dusting of onion powder right across the top. No need for garlic powder. You already have that roasted garlic. I'm going to be going in with some poultry seasoning right across the top. I'm also going to be using some Cajun seasoning. Um, now, this is not the spicy one. This is just the regular straight up Cajun seasoning. So just be mindful. Um, and because there's not a lot of um, salt in the bird completely um you know you can be a little bit more heavier handed with that that's completely fine you don't want it to be under salted and of course i'm adding in paprika for color um and then i'm also going to be adding in a pinch of black peppercorn now once you get this all seasoned i like to place this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or so so that that butter can kind of firm up a bit before you place it in the oven i'm going to be baking this at 325 degrees and i'm going to be using this meter thermometer of course you do not have to use one as fancy as this but this bad boy is actually kind of sickening it it definitely makes sure that you come out with the most perfectly cooked turkey possible or really any meats. Like I said, I'm going to be roasting this at 325. Like Again, I let that sit in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes first. Now, as you guys can see, that meter app is sickening. It lets you know exactly how long it's going to take for it to cook. It lets you know the exterior temperature in the oven, the temperature inside of the oven. You can um, gauge the different temperature that you want the meat to be, like if you're cooking steak and things like that. So it's pretty sickening. And this is not a paid promotion. It's just something that I enjoy using. It lets you know when it's time to remove it from the heat. It lets you know how long you need to allow the food to rest. So I kind of live for it. Um, now, after about the first hour, once I started to see a little bit of color coming onto the turkey, what I wanted to do then was start to work on the rest of the butter with the cheesecloth method. Now, again, I learned this from watching Julia Child's videos back in the day. So I took that remaining um, compound butter. I added in a few splashes of white wine, not a sweet wine. I'm using a Sauvignon Blanc. Just allow that butter to melt down. You don't need it to be boiling because you're going to have to be handling it. You're going to dip the cheesecloth down into the butter and allow it to kind of soak into it. As you can see, my turkey just started to change color. And this is about the time when you want to do it. Now you're just going to carefully take that cheesecloth, cover up your turkey completely. And as it's cooking, about every 10, well, not every 10 minutes, but I would say about every 15 minutes or so, you want to make sure that you're going in and ladling on the butter and the drippings from the bottom of the pan. That's going to make sure that the cheesecloth itself stays nice and hydrated. And baby, when I tell you, when that damn turkey came up out of the oven, it took about four hours. The cheesecloth method, it just, you just peel it off after it comes out of the oven and it just leaves you with the most divine turkey. Okay. It, it, it keeps it from burning, but it allows it to be like the most perfect brown color. And look at the damn juice. I didn't have to use no syringes. I did no injections, nothing like that. This is just literally from using that cheesecloth method, going in, making sure that I'm basting it with more and more and more of the drippings from the bottom of the pan. And it just leaves you with a juicy and succulent turkey. Juicy and succulent. And then, of course... All of those leftover drippings at the bottom of the pan when you're done with it, honey, make yourself some gravy, honey. That's that's all you got to do. Is It really is just that simple. Now, I don't know about you, but I hope y'all have got my cookbook, Cultural Mosaic, a food tour around the world. A food tour around the globe. Ooh, child, I'm just, I'm just so hungry that I done just messed up the name of my own damn book. You know what the hell the name of my book is. It's Cultural Mosaic, a food tour around the globe. Get the damn book. It's in my description box. You know you want it. How else are you going to make sure that you have a sickening holiday season? And it's also perfect for gifting. Bye.